In this lecture, I want to show you how to create a recurrent neural network, a so-called RNN, from scratch with Python. I, um, so, so before we start with the, um, with the outline, um, I want to talk with you about a few prerequisites. Uh, so you should be fluid with some basic uh, object-oriented programming methods. Uh, so you should know what methods, classes are in Python and what inheritance is and how it works. Uh, you should be familiar with some basic linear algebra like the dot product, the inner product, and the outer product. So essentially how to multiply vectors and matrices. And um, you should be fluent with uh, derivatives. So you should understand what a derivative is and what a gradient then is in that regard. And um, on top, uh, we will use some material from earlier lectures. Um, especially, we want to use the optimizer stochastic gradient descent uh, for um, our RNN. And we created this optimizer in ANN from scratch. And we want to modify this optimizer. So you can just download the optimizer from my GitHub repository, and you can then just use it. And we're going to do that and implement this uh, for our RNN and modify it slightly. The idea of this lecture is that we first start with the RNN itself. So what an RNN is, uh, what kind of different RNNs do exist, and the whole context, uh, why people came up with RNNs, and um, what kind of role it still plays today. Then we want to talk about the RNL, RNN cell. And then we want to talk about a very particular feature of RNNs, uh, it's so-called backpropagation through time. And then, of course, at some point, we have to look at the full backpropagation. And then we want to use our stochastic gradient descent optimizer from the previous lecture I just mentioned. Uh, we want to modify this a bit and apply it to our RNN. And then at the end, of course, uh, we want to just uh, train and run our RNN and evaluate the training and want to put this into a full package. So let me just start with the idea of an RNN. So the idea was to find um, a method for analyzing time series in terms of prediction and forecasting. Uh, in a wider sense, that includes um, speech recognition and handwriting. Um, and that, that happened actually in the pretty early days. Um, so like in the 70s, um, so when the uh, RNNs were invented, and you can actually see the RNNs as a precursor of the LSTMs later. And uh, when you talk about uh, language models and also the transformer structure, uh, knowing how an RNN LSTM works helps to understand where um, all the new architectures are coming from in that context. So what is the idea, first of all, or what is the problem we want to solve? So let's say we have a time series, um, and let's say we call it x as a function of t. So that can be actually time, so it could be a date. Um, um, it could be seconds, um, could be anything that just goes along the time axis. And to every time point, uh, we produce an output yt. And then the idea is that if we have um, a certain amount of information concerning the uh, x and y, then given a new x, uh, we can make some predictions uh, for yt in the future. So for example, uh, let's say we want to analyze the stock market and we want to see how, um, for example, our uh, stocks um, just change over time and then we just make an analysis of the past and then we hopefully want to make uh, a useful prediction for the future based on what we have seen in the past. So we, the idea is that we cannot really uh, fit this curve with a normal model like just normal curve fitting that we for example know okay, okay somehow it goes exponentially or so. So the idea is that we have a time series which does not really follow an analytic solution um, so that we still, however, want to make some predictions. So like really like um, the value of stocks on the market or something like that. Or think about the pandemic a few years ago with Corona. Uh, so just that we want to estimate how many 
cases do we have per day or per month in the future, given uh, the data from the previous years. So that's a kind of the idea. Um, so we want to have a time series analysis just from the pure observation uh, without knowing the actual underlying, um, let's say, mathematical rules. Uh, and even in many cases, there, there is there is no such analytical solution for that. So that's the whole idea. And the, um, the first step to approach this problem is the following. So somehow you have to learn how x turns into y so you have to put something in between um, <laughs> roughly speaking and it's a so-called cell and this cell should contain learnables so learnables like the weights and the biases we know from um, other neural networks so we have an x that we somehow merge with some weights and it uh, produces a y so a forecast for y and the compared to the actual value y. So we have to put a cell in between x and y. But then the thing is that um, the output of the different time points is somehow connected. So somehow we have to um, transfer information from the cell from one time point t to the time point t plus 1. Because we know that x and y um, are of course connected and that the value yt plus 1 depends on yt. So somehow we have to transfer information from one cell to the next cell. Um, so you can actually kind of define this already as a version of context. Um, of course, for actual language models, context will be more complex than we have to talk about things like self-attention, cross-attention, and um, we need word embedding and so on. Uh, but it, let's say that's the first step. So we somehow have to connect what happened at time step t to what will happen at time step t plus one. And we continue with that uh, throughout the, the entire um, different time series. And there is not uh, a RNN, so there are different versions. So what I just explained here and what we want to do in this lecture is to create a so-called many-to-many. So we have values in x to any time point t and want to predict uh, the outcome y to any time point t. But in principle, you can also have many-to-one. Uh, so just think about classification or so, um, like handwriting classification, um, or you have also one-to-many. So there are different ways how to do that. Um, the cell itself uh, does not really differ for the different versions of an RNN, uh, the only thing that differs a bit is the backpropagation. Uh, but we want to, as I said, focus on many-to-many. Uh, -many, and once you understand the concept, um, it's hopefully not uh, a big deal to apply it for one-to-many and many-to-one. So the idea then is that we have one cell, and we want to apply this, this cell recursively. So an RNN is an example of recursion. Therefore, um, it is actually the same cell. So we will have the same weights within the cell for the different time points. But all these time points will contribute to the weights in the cell and the other learnables. The um, idea is that an RNN is really easy to implement. Remember, it was invented in the 70s where people did not have the computational power by, by far that we have today. So it's very simple to implement. Uh, we also have a direction, also we have an error of time, uh, which you can already see here by the idea, but you also will see that later, especially when we uh, then look at the backpropagation through time. So there is a sense of direction for time. And of course, there also uh, disadvantages because if you run the same cell recursively many times and we can really have time series that, that are really long like uh, then you will have like thousands tens of thousands of cells and you always um, yeah at the end if you do back propagation you always multiply the inner derivatives with the outer derivatives so that might lead to vanishing or also exploding gradients um, and that could be very challenging if you want to train an RNN, and we are also going to see that, that it's not easy to do that. And it has also what we call a short memory, so it only remembers uh, what happened a few sequences 
a go. And therefore, the prediction will only reach um, a few time points in the future. And partly this problem has been solved with LSTMs. So once we have our RNN, um, we can also, in a relatively simple way, turn this into an LSTM. And then we have a long-term memory and also a short-term memory. And the uh, network can learn uh, what is important for long-term memory and what's important for the short-term memory. So we don't have that here. We just have a short memory. And we also will see that then once we have our RNN and we will make our prediction. So that's actually it already um, about the idea. And in the next chapter, we want to talk about uh, the structure of an RNA cell.